Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. This is Tom Christie in the Carving Shop, and this will be session five, and probably the last session of carving this great pintail decoy. We've got uh, the components put together, and uh, I let this glue seam dry overnight, so we'll get that taken care of today. Get the bottom cleaned up, branded, sealed, and then uh, we'll hopefully get to flotation today. And uh, that's, that's always fun for me. I'm 67 years old and I still get a kick out of seeing the decoy in the water and how it floats on the water. Sometimes you can't get the kid out of the, the old man. Anyway, having fun with this decoy and I like the way he looks. And uh, if you're enjoying the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It's totally free. It doesn't commit you to anything. It just helps me out as I continue to add content and build this repository of how-to carving and painting information for the decoy carving community. All right, let's get going. First thing I want to do is peel off any excess epoxy and also if there's any mismatch in the upper and lower halves hopefully you can see that there there is a bit there always seems to be I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna use an old saber tooth burr this is a three-quarter inch burr that I use for this purpose because even cured that uh, two-part epoxy tends to junk up your good burrs you can see there's a build up right there but this is enough uh, texture on here still to clean this off. So it's perfect for that purpose. So let's get that done. I will also touch up the neck, although it looks pretty clean. I don't think I have to do anything to that before we uh, use some body filler to take care of the neck joint and also cover this seam. You might ask, do you really need body filler? And it, it just depends on what you're doing, what you're using. It's just something that I've started to do uh, a long time ago, and I haven't had any trouble with it at all in terms of durability, is just use that to feather over the seam because it's amazing how often that seam can pop up through the paint, and I just don't like that. So I want to totally disguise the seam. All right, let's get going. I'm going to run this at uh, two times speed because it's kind of repetitive. I'm just stripping off the excess epoxy and matching up the upper and lower section and then just blending back so that we have a pretty good transition. You can see there's a mismatch there and I'm just grinding some wood off as I'm taking off the excess epoxy so that those upper and lower halves match well. This doesn't take long to run around the decoy. And we want to make sure we're not creating a bunch of big flat spots here. So I'm just barely hitting this so that we maintain roundness in the decoy. And being careful not to gouge into the wood too much because the carving has already been done. Now I'm going to hand sand that area with kind of a roll of Swiss sandpaper. The roll just lets you really bear down. And uh, I'll go over the entire decoy like that. And then we'll be ready for the body filler material. All right, that seam looks really good. Uh, so you could choose to stop right there. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little Bondo. Before I do that, I like to take some acetone, just run it across the joint. It gets rid of loose sawdust that we don't want in the way and just kind of cleans up the wood in that area to promote bonding of the Bondo or whatever body filler you're using. Or 
Right now, I'm gonna do the same with the neck joint, by the way. Right now, I've been using uh, Car Groom Lightweight Body Filler. I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you that's what I've been using and I kind of like the way it cures and sands and holds up. So Bondo is good as well. All right, I've got my body filler mixed up. I've got to work pretty quickly. So I'll apologize on the front end if I don't have all the best camera angles here. I just have to get moving because this body filler sets up quick. So I'm just feathering on over that joint. We don't want a big built up ridge here either. So it needs to be relatively light, but enough to cover that joint. And I'm just trying to feather it out in both directions. This is probably a three quarter inch wide piece of plastic that comes from a, some sort of a food tub. I've had it so long, I don't know where it came from, but you know, tubs, plastic containers that you throw away can be a great source for cutting these little custom I'm probably way off screen here sorry about that you can also cut a little bigger one and uh, use that to smooth things out get a nice feathering effect with it so I'll keep doing this and uh, get that seam covered and then we'll mix up a fresh batch for the neck joint back in a minute all right well i was able to work quickly and use that same batch of uh, body filler just a quick look around there's some roughness there i just try to make sure there's enough material but you can see it's very thin down here i'll let that set and then we'll get that sanded off, smoothed out. One nice thing about the two component body filler, it sets up really quick. So in about 10 minutes, it's workable. And I'm gonna use this little teardrop shape burr and take off the roughness with a very light touch, same down here, and then finish sand to smooth things out. I'm going to speed up the video two times and uh, so so we can get through this pretty quickly but you can see quite a bit of the process and again you just have to use a light touch with this burr but it does a really nice job of peeling that material off. I realize you can't see it right now so I'll try to get some better angles with the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. That would help. So I'm not gouging into the wood much. I'm just feathering that material off and making sure I don't take it all off down to the seam so we defeat the purpose. But very quickly you can get things shaped up And then we'll we'll sand the rest of it off but this really speeds up the process you can remove some of the big hunks of material get it roughed out and then use your sanding to finish and feather things in you can see i'm just running that back and forth across it and not digging in again i, I want to leave the seam buried as much as possible it's going to come through in a few spots which is okay uh, because the seam is nice and tight. Once that's done, I'm going to use a roll of uh, Swiss sandpaper. This is probably 80 grit, but it's an old roll, so it's kind of worn down. But it's, it's good for this purpose. And I'm just going to go over the entire area 
of the uh, body filler and make sure things are feathered out into the wood so it's not visible once we uh, prime and paint the decoy. This takes some time and just, I do this under strong light so you can see any little shadows cast by the remaining material, but I'll do that on the body seam as well. All right, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the way that turned out. Now I'm just hand sanding with 150 grip sandpaper and just under strong light looking for any remaining areas that need to be smoothed out or blended uh, so that we have a nice smooth transition on both the neck and the body seam. Just looking for any tool marks or gouges in the wood that need to be smoothed out. Once that's ready to go, I'm going to use my belt sander now to clean off the bottom of the decoy. Uh, make sure all the roughness is removed. And a belt sander does that in pretty quick order with Tupelo especially it's pretty soft wood so I'm just gonna run that back and forth until I get a nice smooth finish on the bottom of the decoy we want everything flat so it'll match up well with the keel once we mount the keel on the bottom almost there I think one more touch here and that looks good. Now that we have the bottom finished, I can uh, set the water line, strike the water line on the decoy. So I've got this little jig, got that set to the depth that I want to see on the decoy. And then I'm going to Strike a line all the way around. Using my jig. And this will give us, during the flotation test, exactly where the decoy should float. And we want to balance it so that it hits that line all the way around, front to back, side to side, so it's floating level in the water and right at where we set the pattern which is key if it's too low in the water it's going to look like it's too low in the water <laughs> if it's too high it's going to look like a cork bobbing around out there so we we spend a lot of time establishing how big that side pocket should be what the profile should be from a distance so it's really important that we hit that draft right on the nose that takes some experience. You know, I, I saw a question the other day. I, I uh, made my decoy so light that when I weighted the keel, I had to put a ton of lead into it to pull it down to where the water level should be. And that's probably because you left too much wood down here uh, because then you've got to really pull it under. So. I'm only leaving uh, five eighths of an inch down there, and that's just through experience because I know this decoy just weighs over a pound. It's not going to take a ton of weight to get it to float right. Um, so that all happens in the planning of your pattern. And like I said, some of that comes with experience. And if you want to make a heavier decoy, you can then make your draft a little uh, deeper. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, enough on that. Now I want to put a brand on the bottom of the decoy. By the way, I had a little flaw there, and that actually came from one of those nails uh, that I used to put the halves together, and I don't want any water seeping in there, so I put a little uh, body filler in there. We could sand that off, make sure the bottom is uh, intact. Thank you.
All right, I think we're ready to brand the decoy. And uh, it's always a fun activity because you know the carving is done at this point. All right, I'm going to use deft semi-gloss wood finish to seal up the decoy and put uh, four or five coats on, let it dry between coats. Really lay it on the bottom, let it soak in. Tail makes a nice handle for this. Normally I would have a respirator on as I spray, uh, but just for the sake of this video, not. Okay, I'll let that dry and then we'll come back and hit the tail area and seal it up with multiple coats. All right, I've got the keel taped on temporarily with electrician's tape so that it's a waterproof connection. And then I use these lead strap anchors. I buy them in eight ounce strips. They're decoy anchors and I use 10 snips. You can easily cut them into lengths. So uh, each of these is two ounces. So we'll see how much weight we need to get this to float properly and to self-right. With the head that far down underwater, it's gonna take a little bit more weight to get it to turn over. So we'll have to experiment with how much lead it's gonna take for this particular decoy. All right, I've got, I'm gonna start with uh, four ounces of lead and I'm crowding the front. Normally in a puddle duck, the weight needs to be a little further for forward because the rump back here is pretty narrow and lifted and it has a tendency to want to settle in the back. So let's see what this looks like. Definitely turns over fine. We're on the line here, a little below the line in back as, as suspected. So I'm gonna need to crowd the front more than I have to get that tail to lift up and out of the water. So I'm gonna move that weight farther forward and see what it looks like. Okay, I've moved that weight more forward and I'm still at the four ounces and uh, it's still slightly low in the tail, but it looks pretty good. Let's see from side to side. We're just at or above the water line there on that side. And same here, we're just at or above the water line. The water is just above the line, is what I'm saying. So I think four ounces looks good. It's, it's pretty stable, as much as a high head pintail can be. I think what I'm gonna do is, I've got the center of that lead right here. I'm gonna drill my pocket right up here behind the anchor hole. Put all my lead right up here and that should make it float right where I want it to. It's nice that there's no side to side adjustment needed in this decoy. It floats nice and level side to side. So I'm just using an awl and I'm marking my keel screw hole locations. So we know where those belong. And 
And now I'm gonna use a Forstner bit and crowd this uh, front anchor hole like we talked about and get my weight right up front here. And I can cut these pieces shorter so we can stack them in there and just keep the weight up front. Okay, I cut those two ounce strips into thirds. So we have about a seven eighth inch piece. I can stack them and that way I only have to drill out a pocket that is about an inch long here. And I can just stack them all right up in the front of the decoy where they're needed. All right, I've got my pocket marked out there and then I've set my stop on the drill press so that I don't go through the bottom of the keel, but I get as low as I can go to get that weight down as low as possible. This is a three quarter inch horseman bit. piece of walnut. Okay, I've got my pocket drilled out. I didn't go through the bottom, that's a good thing. All right, I'm gonna use DEFCON five minute epoxy. And I'm gonna start to uh, putting that in the slot here. And then one by one, adding my weights. Make sure they're pressed down flat. A lot of people melt their lead and just pour it into the cavity and there's that's a good approach. I just like the less fumes approach. I'm a wimp. You know, you gotta watch those lead fumes, as most of you know. Be careful. Just trying to crowd the front where we need the weight. Make sure things are pressed down. A lot of times I'll put a Tupelo plug in and seal that up uh, if the weight doesn't fully fill the hole. In this case, we're right to the top. So I won't need a plug. And if any gaps are left over, I can just use a little... Uh, epoxy here or use my silicone caulk. When I seal the screws, I can just swab a little on here to make sure everything's closed up, sealed up good. 
While that's drying, I'm gonna drill my keel screw holes. I can feel going through that oak inside the decoy, which is what we want. I had mentioned that I may have to <clears throat> seal this area as that glue set, it kind of sank down in and left a gap here. And I don't want any water to be able to get inside the keel. So I'm using some Lexel. It's, a, it's just a tough silicone adhesive caulk and it's clear. And I'm just gonna load it in there and fill that little gap. So we've got that taken care of. Now I'm using this same material on the keel screws. I like to put a little sealant around each hole and then coat each screw with sealant. And as you drive it home, that forms a kind of a gasket around those keel uh, holes so that they're nice and watertight. Nothing can get in there. All right, let's go ahead and mount this keel. As I mentioned, I'm going to take a little of this sealant and put it right around the perimeter of the screw hole. And if a little of that squeezes out when we set the keel, so much the better. It's clear and will wipe off any excess. And then I like to just roll the screw, the keel screws in the sealant so they've got a good coat on the threads put that in the keel get these lined up Like that. And now I'm going to drive those screws home. And it goes easy at first, and then it starts to hit that oak, and things really tighten up. right now make sure I don't damage the decoy putting the keel on and that sealant kind of seals around the screws as well and I'll wipe off any excess but you can see it's squeezing out a little on both sides and I'll just use a piece of paper towel and uh, wipe off that excess. Same up here, if there's any that squeezed out around the screws. There we go. All right, the keel is on and uh, I'm gonna let that caulk set and then go give it one more float test just to make sure I'm right on that line before we uh, prime the decoy and I lose that line. All right, I've got the bottom of the decoy masked off and uh, I've got my gray primer. Just gonna prime the bird. Just get a nice even coat. So I'll finish this up and come back, but he's looking pretty sharp. All 
All right, got the bird primed and it's drying, but I wanted to show you a few views. Kind of a 360. The front view. All right, everybody, that's a wrap on the Pintail Drake decoy. And it's been a fun project. They're a beautiful bird. I'm hoping this series of videos will help those of you out there that are just starting to carve. Might pique your interest, might inspire you to, to give it a try. And uh, that is very encouraging to me. So keep the comments and suggestions coming as I continue to add content to the channel with the goal of helping people um, pursue this passion that I love so much and uh, honor waterfowl or wildfowl in this way. And like I've said before, when you're done working on something, it's so nice to have something to show for your efforts and you can trade it with somebody else. You can give it to some a loved one or a friend or you can sell them. That's another option, which I do all of those. So, until next time, this is Tom Christie signing out. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. A shout out to the international carvers out there. I'm so encouraged that you're tuning into the channel. Keep it up. Talk to you later.